This video is the first in the home stretch, the final number of videos we have to do to get through the content that's tested on the SAT. And we're, in this set of your videos, we're going to talk about statistics and data analysis, probability, that kind of thing. So in the first video, we're going to talk about charts and graphs. And it's kind of hard to do a review video on charts and graphs because unlike with the other topics, there are really no things that you can memorize or skills you can learn beyond simply being able to recognize what certain charts look like and really beyond simply recognizing what a charts and graphs question itself looks like. So in this video I'm just going to go through some of the basic charts and graphs you might see on the SAT and just some notes about them and how to, uh, how to approach them and how to get the data you need out of the charts. So the first one you might see is a pie chart, pie chart, or also known as a circle graph. And these are usually, you know, sectioned off into little wedges. And sometimes these wedges are given fractional amounts, sometimes they're given numerical labels, but often they're given uh, percentile labels. So maybe this is, I don't know, let's say this is 20%, this is 15%, this is 15%, this is 25%, so let's see, 30, 50, 70, and this would be, that doesn't really work well. The numbers don't work out. Let's make this 20%, and then let's make this 30%. And then you've got to use, and maybe this is you know 30% A, 20% B, right? They'll label it as such. And then they're going to ask you a certain question about this chart. So these kinds of charts usually incorporate, as you can expect, percents, fractions, decimals, stuff that we've learned in earlier chapters. And this is actually a point that can be made about any of the, pi, uh, the uh, charts and graphs questions. And that point is that you will not only have to be able to read the chart and get the data you need, but often you'll be able to have to do, you'll have to do other uh, Mathematic operate, mathematical operations such as percents or fractions or some other topic that's going to be mixed in here. So it's not only going to be, it sometimes will, but not always just going to be about reading the chart and finding the information. You'll have to do some sort of operations on that data once you get it. Uh, another kind of chart you might see is a line graph. So usually you've got these two axes here and they're both labeled with something. So let's say, I don't know, months. And let's say, I don't know, sales. Let's pretend this is like a monthly chart of sales. And then, you know, each one of these is going to be ticked off for your months. This is going to be ticked off for your sales level. And then you're going to have certain data points. And really, this is no different. That's not a great picture. We get the idea. Really, this is no different uh, than uh, coordinate axes where you got some kind of graphed function in some sense. So these are line graphs. And again, you might have to find some information about this. But the point is you've got to be able to read uh, these like a um, coordinate geometry graph where you got to say okay if I'm looking at this month then the number of sales in that month are this value here and if I'm looking at this month then the number of sales at that month is you know this value here and so on right um, so what other kinds another one that's related to this it's kind of similar to the line graph it's just written in a different way would be the bar graph bar bar graph. And that will look something like this. Again, you'll have axes. Again, maybe it's labeled months down here. Let's just pretend. And then, you know, you've got each of your months labeled here. And then you've got some value, let's say sales again. And then instead of having plots graph, you'll have essentially these bars that tell you the magnitude of each of the sales values, for instance, in the month. And just like with these, you've got to be able to read this and say, okay, in this month right here, we had this number of sales. So I'd have to, you know, read across here and say, okay, this is the number of sales in this month. So I don't know, let's say this is 50. So, you know, this would be 50, maybe this would be 50, this would be 55, right? This would be 10. I don't know, I'm just making this up. This is 10, this is 40, right? And then you got to answer some question based off of that data. Uh, finally, or not finally, one more could be the pictograph. And that is very similar. I mean, there's a lot of ways to draw it, uh, but one way could be something like this. So let's say you've got, you know, sales. And then you're told that this equals $100 of sales. And then let's say, again, you've got months. So I don't know, January, February, March, April, May, June. Uh, so instead of having a bar or a kind of a scatter plot, you're going to have symbols to denote how much, how many sales were made in those months and so on, right? And note this is pretty similar to a bar graph. It's just, instead of having a bar, you're just using these symbols that stand in for some value, which they're going to have to tell you, right? So this right here would be $300. This would be equal to $100. This is one, two, three, four, five, five hundred, and so on. And again, they may, uh, 
they're going to ask you certain questions on it. Hard to predict what, but as long as you can read it and as long as you know how to do the other math topics in this section, um, you'll be good to go. So let's see if there's any other things I can think about for charts and graphs. You know, that's pretty much going to be it. Um, you know, other times we'll just have simple tables. That's another one you'll see. So they'll just say, you know, Bob, and John, and then they'll label it like this. So again, June, February, March, April, May, June. And again, give you like, okay, so Bob had 10 sales. John had 20 in June, in January. He had 15. He had 20 again. He had 5. He had 30, right? And so on. So again, instead of having it graphed this way or this way, it's graphed sim or it's charted simply by putting in information in these tables. So you might also have to read a table. Uh, let's see. Actually, I think there's one more. Scatter plots. So this is a table up here, but scatter plots is perhaps the last one. Again, you might see some other ones that are hard to that are hard to categorize here that I haven't gone over. But the point is, is if you can read these basic ones, you should be able to read, you know, any chart that they throw at you, as long as you read the important things. So again, with a scatter plot, you're going to have the basics of a line graph, except you're going to have your points, you know, graphed out here. But the problem is, instead of having a line connecting them, you're just going to have the points like this. You've got to be able to read. It's, it's just like reading a set of points on you know coordinate axes. You've got to say, okay, this corresponds to this value. This guy here corresponds to this value and to this value, and so on and so forth. A um, couple things that are important to read when you're doing any of these graphs and charts problem. Obviously, what's labeled on the axes is important for that case. What's labeled on these axes is important. Often the title is important, so they'll have some kind of title at the top, and often that title will tell you what this chart is showing you, or what this chart is representing, what kind of data it's got on it. So make sure you read that pretty carefully. So that's all I can really say about graphs and charts. Again, you know, it's hard to prepare um, for these kinds of questions. At the very least, you can know what kinds of charts you might expect, and if you're familiar with the other math concepts, you should be good to go on these questions.